Okay, so welcome everybody to Enhancing the Accountant Bookkeeper Connection Series. Um, for those of you who don't know me, which I don't think there's anybody in the call who doesn't know me, that is myself, um, Tanya Hills. I am a certified professional bookkeeper and the founder of Tanya or Pod Bookkeeping Services and Tanya's Bookkeepers Bootcamp. A little bit about me, I'm not going to read all this because I know you guys can read. Um, insightful Accountant, Top Canadian Pro Advisor for 2020, Insightful Accountant, Top 100 Pro Advisor for 2018, 19, 20, CPB Canada Professional of the Year um, or Professional Leader of the Year for 2019, Practice Ignitions Top 50 Women Accounting 2018, 2019, and nominated for 2020, um, and into a global firm in the future 2018, and Canadian runner up for 2017, and there's more, but I'm not going to go into all of them. Um, so this webinar um, will be submitted. We haven't sent it off yet. It will be submitted for CE credits um, or CPD credits, they're now calling them, through CPB Canada. I keep forgetting to update this slide. There will be two polls that must be answered in order to qualify for the credits. And a recording of the webinar will be emailed within two days. And certificates for the CEC credit or CPD credits will be emailed within two weeks of receiving approval. The other ones I just found, I did get approval a few weeks ago fell through the cracks, I will be sending those out this weekend for January's. February's, um, there's a delay with that as well, but we'll get hopefully February's and this one will get um, approved together. Um, okay, so CAD accounting is a little bit about Jonathan. Um, and so we've been collaborating with Jonathan and his team for a number of years. We have multiple mutual clients. Um, I, what I love is he works in QBO. He has the attention to the client um, detail, outstanding customer service, absolutely wonderful to work with because he knows that, you know, by teaching me or explaining things to me of why he needs things. It means he's going to get things better and we collaborate better together. And I think Jonathan was probably the first one who I started collaborating with and was the main reason that I now have a newfound respect for accountants. Um, because before then I had had very, very negative experiences. So I didn't have respect for accountants. So I realized that was just that one group of people. And, you know, um, you know, working with Jonathan, like I say, he's completely changed my, my thought process on, on everything. And I have since, you know, met many other accountants and realized I just met the, a few bad, uh, bad apples immediately. Anyway, so that is it for the introduction. I am going to stop sharing and let Jonathan start sharing. And there we are. All right. So um, today we're going to go over finding flow. Um, just uh, some of this stuff is academic. I picked up from books. I'm trying not to make it very academic, but I would like people to chime in when they feel like they can contribute something of value to the group because it's different for everybody. Um, everybody has a different way of being in flow, of staying in flow, things along those lines. So uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm the founder of CAD Accounting Solutions Professional Corporation. Uh, I was a member of the inaugural Intuit Accountants Council and still have a relationship with Intuit. Uh, Tanya, that reminds me, we need to connect offline. Some interesting things coming in work papers. Very excited. I was the recipient of the 2018 uh, Inspire Accountant Award. Uh, we're Elite Pro Advisors, QBO Advanced Certified. Mo all of the team is QBO Basic Certified and some are working towards their advanced certification as well. We work with a lot of cloud bookkeeping firms uh, as their accountant and in collaborative ways as well, even if we don't necessarily do business together, like shared customers, things like that. Uh, I'm considered a thought leader in technology and accounting, and I love working with technology companies. Our bread and butter is digital marketers, content creators, those kind of, of businesses. So. Uh, so just a quick agenda for today. Um, what is flow? Uh, deep work versus shallow work. Uh, schedule structure and system setup and how to communicate and then this concept that I hope we have time to get into of lifestyle design that's kind of the direction I'm going in and I'm really excited to, to get that going so our first poll question why should you find your flow a to have less stress and more free time b to ensure that pr uh, processes proceed smoothly and everyone knows their role and their timing c to ensure customer work is provided on time with high quality d all of the above or e b and c
Okay, so just a reminder that you need to answer both of the poll questions in order to get your credit. So we've got 13 out of 15. And I think Jonathan, you and I are included as the other two. So yeah, I actually answered. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. So then there's one other person who didn't answer. We'll give five seconds. You don't have to get it right, you just have to answer. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we'll end the polling and share the results. Interesting. All of these okay. up, B and C. All right, I, I chose B and C. And the reason being is being in flow doesn't necessarily mean having more free time. You might schedule your time differently. You might handle stress differently, but it's really about just making things go smoothly. I am, let's be realistic, tax season for somebody like me, we're, we're not going to have more free time or be stress-free, but we can very much be in flow. And I think uh, that Tim would agree that we've, we've started to find our flow really well in March. And, uh, you know, we want to keep, keep going that way. Get ahead of it. Yeah. Stay ahead of it. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I would think that, that, you know, the, the stress and free time would be a result of finding your flow, not necessarily the reason, the result of it is how I would kind of look at that. Yeah. I can't wait to hear Jonathan pronounce this name. Ah, all right. I was wondering when that would come up. Actually, it's not too bad. <laughs> Uh, so flow is actually a psychological concept um, created by, are you ready? Mahali Chikset Mahali. That's how you say that name. Don't ask me to spell it. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's Chikset Mihai. Very good. Very good. <laughs> uh, Chik um, is an so area, this... Sent is Saint, and Mihai is Michael. So, oh, so, so I did not know that. I did not know that. <laughs> I've listened to this book. Wow. This book is very interesting. It's, it's a series of interviews he gave about the concept of flow. It's a state of, per, of mind in which a person becomes fully immersed in activity. That means a, a, like hardcore focus. You're not trying to multitask. You're not answering your phone, checking Facebook, getting, you know, whatever other distractions that you might have. Sometimes, especially in COVID, it could be really hard to get in the flow, co-working with people at home. Uh, we've got a really good setup ourselves here, but that's just, you know, over years of working from home. And prior to this space, we were in 600 square feet. So that was very important there to, to ensure that we were able to stay in flow. Um, I would recommend reading it. It's not my like top 10 of books, but it's a very interesting conceptual book. So in his words, the ego falls away, time flies, every action, movement, and thought flows inevitably from the previous one, like playing jazz. Your whole being is involved and you're using your skills to the utmost. Or uh, while in this mental state, people are completely involved and focused on what they're doing. I'm sure everybody here has recognizes that feeling of flow and those times when you're in flow. And when you can get into flow, you can achieve amazing things. The other day, um, we were working on notice to reader statements. Our process is not using the QuickBooks tool, uh, we find it doesn't work 100% yet, but I'm very excited because it is getting improved. Um, but, you know, normally we budget about three to three to five hours to create the notice to reader statements with notes. I turn around an hour and a half later by being in flow, by having no distractions and being in a scheduled deep work session, I was able to get a draft NTR done in an hour and a half, which was absolutely tremendous. It's the fastest I've ever done one. And I felt good about it. It looked good. It, it made sense, everything like that. So I did just mention Deep Work. This is uh, from another uh, author, Cal Newport. Uh, the book was published in 2016. And again, it's the abil ability to focus without distraction on a cognitively demanding task, right? So for instance, the surgeon who's doing open heart surgery is definitely in a deep work session. Uh, for, for me, it might be, you know, setting up an accounting system, doing taxes those kind of things would be a deep work session so shallow work is the more scattered and unfocused that's like you know going through your emails or for me email and slack those are usually the things i tackle first thing in the day um you know going on social media answering the phone calling people it can be very exhausting 
It often goes in short bursts and it requires you to switch your focus several, several times. Whereas deep work, you're focused on a single thing. I don't schedule less than 90 minutes for a deep work session. I find optimal for me is three hours, but sometimes three hours is too much. And it's really kind of a nice surprise, like doing that notice to reader. I came out an hour and a half later. I'm like, I have another 90 minutes booked for this deep work session. What else can I get done? Because I am not being distracted by anything. I'm very, very focused on that when that happens. Um, so this was from the book that human brains are good for three deep work blocks a day with a max of three hours each. I will only schedule myself two. Uh, and that is because I know that there are definitely shallow work sessions that I need to get into play. Um, lately, I found that I'm only actually able to get in about four blocks a week just because it's tax season and you're getting pulled in a, a million different directions. But during those deep work sessions, I'm not focused on anything else. I'm not doing anything else. So setting schedules, um, I schedule my deep work sessions. Uh, what matters to you most, schedule those things first and obey your schedule. So if it's, you know, taking Billy to his soccer game, make sure it happens. You know, those kind of things. I mean, if, you're, if your kid ever falls and breaks his arm, you're going to the hospital. You're going to have to adjust. But the things that you can schedule, the big rocks, get those done. Um, another question to ask is what needs to be done? Can it be deferred, delegated, or disposed of? This is from uh, I think David Allen getting things done. Um, but like, you know, some things it's like, it might feel like it's important and urgent but it's not necessarily important and urgent. It could be important, but doesn't need to be done right this moment. Particularly with taxes, we're finding, you know, the classic, uh, the other day I had four emails from somebody before I was able to respond to the first one and all like from like 7.30 in the morning to like noon. And it was just like, you know what? Some people are going to get upset that you're not at their beck and call. But quite frankly, I think most of us are in the same boat we're not charging enough to be 100% dedicated to a single customer. So this is something Tim and I have talked about a lot. Taking care of yourself first is extremely important. You are no good if you end up brain dead. So make sure you take the time to, you know, have dinner with your husband or your wife, you know, spend some time with your children, go for a hike, you know, enjoy things out there. So. Does anybody else have any tricks that they do with regards to setting their schedule or things they do to help manage their flow? Um, I do. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No. Okay. So I was just going to say that what we do is with our email, we nail, we try to focus on inbox zero um, in our email. And basically what that means is we're using ClickUp. So we take up our emails, we look at it. We check our emails essentially twice a day. Sometimes it's a little more, but if we don't have time, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, because we find we get lost in email and it throws our schedules off. So if we go in and look, do we answer it immediately or do we schedule it and click up? Then it gets out of the email and we ignore our email until we go to check in the afternoon. Just a couple quick things I'd like to say about email. I love the snooze feature in Gmail. It's fantastic. I can have an email pop up at the exact time when I've scheduled to deal with that item. Um, and I know there's okay. you know, that sense of immediate um, response needed. And sometimes, you know, when you're looking in email, it's not appropriate to respond immediately. You might have to take some time. One thing that I think kind of uh, frustrates some people that we work with is I try not to send a lot of received, I'll get back to you emails or thank you emails or send an email and just say thoughts that's like their their time sucks for the person who's receiving it you know when they get that email it says thank you what are they doing they're saying thank you and they're probably deleting it or, or filing it right but it's that extra little bit of time every occasion that, that can really kind of suck up some time and when somebody sends something and just says thoughts i just send send them back and say you're gonna have to be more specific because usually it's accompanied by a pretty big document or, you know, link to some kind of an article and it's, well, I can't take 30 minutes to read this and give you like thoughts when I have no idea what information it is you want. So clarifying that communication can be really helpful. Dominique, you had something you wanted to say. No, Amy. Uh, one thing. So I love this news feature as well. So I use it in Outlook because 
I'm really bad at looking at my emails and then just forgetting my to-do list and only dealing with my email. So something I try to do is just check it a couple times a day and then I schedule emails. So like I work a lot at night and I get like, that's for me sometimes the easiest time to get things done. So I use the like send later schedule feature. So they all go out later. And then another thing that I've been doing lately is I've been giving clients days of the week. Because like right now I have one really large client that likes to email me every single time they need something. And last week I got over 50 emails from them in a three day period. And I was like, I'm going to lose it <laughs> because like, it's just too much and it's just constant. And then they're expecting me to answer all the time. And I only work on them on Mondays. So I made the very clear expectation. I said, listen, you can email me if you want. Every single one of your emails goes to an email box called the lighthouse. I don't see it. I will be looking at that on Mondays and that's it. If you email me Tuesday to Friday and you need something done, you better call me if you need it and I will do my best. But it's like setting that expectation and those clear boundaries with your, with those people, because they treat me like I'm their full-time employee most of the time. Yeah. So, you know, setting those yeah. and then, because that can be a huge interruption or don't text me because I feel like I need to deal with it right now. So if you want something done, you need to put it in some way actionable. Delegate it. My largest client is the same way, Amy. It's like they think I'm available full time for them. And all my other smaller clients are great. They have their day of the week. They understand it. My largest client, they have their day of the week, but they get, yeah. <laughs> it, it's about making them understand that. And that's the thing is like, I said this to them a few weeks ago and then last week and there was a couple emails that like, hello, are you working? And I like, waited until Monday and Good. I emailed back and I said, I understand that things are important for you, but you are not my only client. And I have a lot of other stuff going on. I time block 10 hours on Mondays to work on this client. If you need something, you can talk to me on Monday. <laughs> you know, well, there's it's, no, it's, it's, it's no, just cause they forgot something doesn't mean I have to drop all of the thing. other things. Yeah. Exactly. Now, one thing that you could do if the, and, and the same thing, I had to do that with one client as well. And we just told them, we said, there is now a rule that when your email comes in, like, or we didn't say now, but we said, here's your day. There's a rule that it just goes automatically in a folder. And I don't look at it till we work on your file. That's but then we turned, exactly. So then what we did, so they knew that we weren't purposely avoiding, we were using automation to do what they were paying us to do. Um, so then what we did, <clears throat> what you could do is turn around and offer them to say, okay, maybe this plan isn't working. Let's revisit your scope. Here's the package you're paying for. This is what you're paying for, for me to work on your file on Mondays. If you want me to be available more often, we can do that, but here's what it's going to cost you. So revisit that conversation in the scope of work with them at a price. And like, again, double it, be prepared for them to accept that and know that that's going to impact your flows so it better darn well be worth it plus some so i say take what's going to be worth it and then add like a 50 percent surcharge on that so they're they're hourly at this time because of the way that they came to me and i cannot put them on a package because like this month i did 60 hours next month i won't so it, it's going to be very different but that's but that's that's the boundary I've set in because like I I don't work for you full time. This is the days of the week you get me, and that's it. So okay. So what me, about? I need to, I'm sorry. I have to go and talk to my husband for a second, but I don't need to take away from that conversation. Keep going. That's okay. So I have a thought, and I'll tell Amy this afterwards. That if you have a situation like that, when I treat that as overtime, you say, okay, if you are on hourly. If you want me to do work outside of your scheduled day of the work, it is going to be done at a different hourly rate because I have to drop things and move things around to be able to work on, on you. So that could be another option. We have an accounting emergency uh, clause in our engagement letters because there's no such thing. And we say that like, I think three times in the engagement letter, there's no such thing as an accounting emergency. It's just a result of bad planning or bad communication. Uh, that's that's what creates an accounting emergency, right? So, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one other thing I do, obviously, the same thing with email filtering. Days of the month, uh, weeks set aside, and all that. But also, I don't pick up the phone. 
we go straight to voicemail, gets emailed. I hate talking to someone unprepared. So all my clients know that they need to leave a detailed message of exactly what they're looking for. And with Ring Central, you get a transcript as well. So it's wonderful. I don't even have to bother listening to it, which is really, really, really good. And um, just I either email them back when I can or it just saves time. And I only check my voicemails twice a day. Excellent. Excellent. I try not to let people have my personal number and I try to train everybody to come through email to contact us. It's actually something I learned from, I think it was Jenny Moore, um, that like, you know, having that one area of, of kind of key information intake, it really helps because then we can share it with the team stuff doesn't get lost when somebody messages me on Facebook or on, you know, a text message, if there's something actionable about it, then I, I either have to put it in my calendar right away or get them to email me because it could get lost in the shuffle. That's the most common time when things get lost in the shuffle is when someone contacts you through a different means than what you're trying to, than mm -hmm. what your system support. It's a business that it's a business phone, but the, uh with the, the VoIP and the way it works is I can create a task directly from the voicemail email mm. notification. So it just either gets filtered directly into their folder or however I want, if, it, if I do need to deal with it, because sometimes with personal tax people, especially when they're buying houses and I know they're in the process of purchasing houses and getting loans, it's insane how many last minute requests they have, even though mm -hmm. they have all the information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to hop on forward. Um, so just some uh, work philosophies. Um, this mindset and power of habit. I didn't actually write a bullet on power of habit because, you know, it's one of my favorite books. Uh, Charles Duhigg, highly recommend it. But it, it's something that's difficult to do, right? To change your habits and to remind yourself to do things in a certain way. And after you've done it again and again and again, it can become a habit. But you have to embrace the ideas you're trying to implement. And uh, Tim will vouch for me on this one if he wants. But one of the things that we try and direct is in our system in Dubsado, we're supposed to look at tasks. I am the worst person in the business for looking at tasks first. <laughs> I mean, email and Slack tend to be my priority. And I'm trying to shift my, uh, shift my habits in that way. I'm getting better, but still have some work to do there. Uh, again, you know, big rock, stones, gravel, then sand. And if you can avoid the sand and the gravel, avoid it. Um, the deep work versus shallow work concept that we discussed. And then there's another book that was, was very influential, The Five Essential Choices to Extraordinary Productivity. Um, prior to starting my own business, I did follow the Franklin Covey Day Planner system. I'm not sure if people are familiar with it, um, but it's uh, I believe it's Stephen Covey and Benjamin Franklin's old company made this kind of joint venture company. And they've got a fantastic system. The book talks about their philosophy and adapting it to the digital world. And I was always wondering why they never released an app. And they go into it a little bit in there. And the fact that there's so much out there already, one more app is not what the world needs. They just need to organize the apps they already have. So it talks about the quadrants of productivity. Um, Q1 is the urgent and important. So Simo was saying, that you know, the, those people who are buying a house might need a very quick response on something. That could be urgent and important. Uh, they have low rates of return, usually about one to one. Oh, uh, that was a mistake. Um, and then the number two, quadrant two, is the important to have a large rate of return. So we do continual improvement in our business. So if we get feedback or you know, hopefully it's constructive and not bashing, we're actually very lucky. We've almost never got that kind of, of feedback where somebody is very aggressive and rude. And we have actually terminated a couple clients because of that. But now we just try not to pick them up in the first place. But those Q2 things are really important. And that could be something like, you know, revising a workflow or, um, you know, planning, scheduling your time, um, implementing a new system or, or something that will or rules, uh, say for instance, with a bank feed or with uh, Dext or with Hubdoc, something along those lines that can save a lot of time in the future. The rate of return on these things is always higher than one-to-one. -one. 
Q3 is the distractions. They seem urgent, they seem important, but they, you really don't need to deal with them immediately. And sometimes you don't need to deal with them at all. So sometimes like say, for instance, the LinkedIn messaging, I've been getting dozens of messages on LinkedIn right now from outsourcing companies in India, the Philippines and things like that. And it's really not urgent for me. It's not important for me. Most of it is just a vendor trying to grab my attention. So if I was to pay attention to that, I would get nothing done. I look at that at the end of the day and I usually respond with a, like a courteous thanks, but we're not making any changes in the middle of tax season. Contact us after September, things along those lines. Q4 is the quadrant of waste where like, you know, maybe you binge watch TV for six hours or something like that. You do need some of that downtime. Some of that stuff that you might actually consider waste is actually a Q2 thing. It's letting, letting your brain rest and letting you come back stronger for your for your your next customer or for yourself or for your family or whatever it might be. Did anybody have comments, questions, anything about these? Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, so the importance of system setups, everybody's systems are different. They have to work for you, they have to work for your team. Um, um can can i just interject for a second yeah sure oh i'm sorry i i didn't realize you were going on to the next thought point um uh for myself uh, so uh, so i took benjamin franklin because i used to do uh workflow um stuff in manufacturing and warehousing and uh, big system stuff for ibm so uh and i took the stephen covey what really helped me were three things one is um working with my own like body and brain like figuring out what what i'm capable of within a week or a month and like what rhythm i needed in order to be able to do deep and prolonged work uh the second thing i did was i scheduled the deep stuff to certain days of the week so it became routine so i knew i like i knew that that this day i better be ready physically and mentally and emotionally to be able to do that work and i did a combination of salami and and eat that frog eat that frog is 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 start on the on the thing that scares the important thing that scares you the most like do it first but i found that if i just did the whole i had to eat the whole frog in one bite that just terrified me so i did the salami method you can't you can't eat a salami in one bite you have to do slices so i did this time thing um i gave myself an objective half an hour an hour like and i just did it every single solitary day and there's somebody else who's written a book that talks about concentration and 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 your ability to sustain deep and high concentration work is a skill. It's like a muscle and it develops over time. So I, I do four days a week where I do something that whether it's a short period or a long period that requires concentration so that when I have to do it five days or longer hours, I've got the I've got the mental and emotional muscle to be able to do that. And that has made a huge difference. It means I don't get brain dead in tax season as quickly and, and, and as often as I used to before. That's uh, some great ideas. And it's actually something I can get into in a minute when we get into lifestyle design, but understanding your own natural flows, uh, like what time of day is best for a deep work session? How much do you have? How much fuel is in your tank? Things along those lines. Uh, that, that's what I'm trying to work on personally now. Um, so yeah, let's, we'll get into that in a, a quick sec. I uh, just wanted to get through the system setups. Um, my hat, so the key thing, it has to work for you. Simpler is always better. Have, you know, the one thing they talk about in the five essential choices is the rule of one try to have as few systems as possible that talk together and that work together and work for you. So our main system, of course, being Google, but Dubsado is really, uh, you know, part, uh, a key integral part of our, our systems. Um, embrace the automation. This is something that I want to get better at, but don't lose the personal touch. So one of the criticisms we had early on was like, I like that I'm getting all this stuff, but am I actually working with human beings? 
So that like, you know, the quick phone call, the quick personalized email, even if it's coming from a system, those things can really help. Um, and then, you know, let the tech do the work when it's possible and when it's logical. It's important to step back and, and revise your systems on a regular basis. And what we try to do is we try to incorporate uh, feedback as quickly as possible. So, you know, if we're going to change a workflow, it usually gets changed the same day that the suggestion is made. And it can be a bit of work to go and change a workflow, especially like, you know, for our T1 workflow, for instance, we have T1 new client, T1 returning client, T1 deceased individual, T1 adjustment. So it's th four different workflows that have to be changed if we're going to change one thing in the T1 workflow. Similar goes, of course, for, for the T2, the corporate tax as well. So communication is key. Uh, keep it super simple. Um, something that we uh, happened recently was we sent an, a canned email. Now, it's, of course, it's personalized from our system and whatnot, and we you know adjust the numbers for that individual. But the email wasn't 100% clear. And this was to somebody who's moved from a sole proprietorship to a corporation. This was their first paycheck from their corporation. So it's like, okay, take this much for your paycheck, send this much to the government for your source deductions. And they thought it was coming out of their paycheck. So they panicked and they're like, why am I sending like two thirds of what I'm taking from the company to the government for source deductions? And I can't live on this. We need to revise how much I'm making and things like that. Well, we were able to, to change that email the same day and to improve our communication for all of our customers who we're, we're working with on that. And that was very, very helpful for, for those people. Um, you know, trying to not speak accountantese, and I'm totally guilty of speaking accountantese at times, but speaking to people in terms that they understand is very important. Um, you know, the personalized emails from our system are helpful, but quite often, you know, a, a quick phone call can, can do a lot. And uh, regularly communicate and clearly communicate uh, with your, your team and with your customers. So um, in that spirit, uh, one thing that is coming down the pipe, at least in Ontario, I don't know about in other provinces, is they are revising. There are no, not going to be notice to reader statements next year. The minimum engagement that a, a CPA can do is a compilation engagement. So it's going to be taxed and compiled statements. And there's the changes of language and whatnot. Um, we'll see kind of where that all falls out. Uh, we're not technically allowed to early adopt this yet but uh, just something to keep in mind. So lifestyle design, this is where I, I'm trying to get to myself. So I love to fish. Um, we're living up here in a, just a beautiful setting and you know, beautiful nature. So I really want to set my schedule. So <laughs> look at the dance for Mimi. So that we're um, like, you know, I'm able to enjoy where I live and enjoy my life as well as get things done. So uh, Dominique brought up the idea of, of, you know, knowing your ups and downs and your, your flows and training that muscle memory to be able to do the work you need to do when you need to do it. Uh, designing the life is really important. So one thing we're working with Julia as our coach at the moment. And one of the things that uh, we got was we do our team check-ins Monday morning and we don't do it right at 9am. We do it at 930. So everybody has kind of a minute to, get oriented, get a cup of coffee, you know, kind of, you know, whatever they need to do to be ready for that. And then I actually don't schedule anything very intense until Monday afternoon. Cause I know that Monday morning I'm going to be distracted. I'm coming off a weekend that hopefully I had a weekend. And then I'm coming into a situation where I'm probably, you know, 60, 70 messages in my inbox, two dozen items on Slack. And it's going to take me, you know, a couple hours to get caught up. And, you know, maybe we need to co-work in some ways with, with different team members and, and set up those kind of things. Another thing that I've been doing is setting aside time to co-work with team members because there are times where even though perhaps the person doesn't need you to be there watching what they're doing, and I'm not there watching what they're doing, but just to be available to be on call for quick questions and answers. Uh, Tim, Sam and I did one of these yesterday and I'm doing another one tomorrow with Sam uh, just to help you know, get people used to processes and those quick questions. Because if they're sent on Slack or if they're sent by email, 
they're not going to get an immediate response. There's an asynchronous communication, right? Somebody's asking a question, but they're not getting it answered right away. Um, I'm finding it uncomfortable to force myself to do some things. Um, and, you know, it's forcing me to ask some tough questions of myself. It's like, what is really important to you and, and how do you want to, to do that? So uh, the first mention I heard of this was the Tim Ferriss four hour work week. If people here have not read it, I would strongly, strongly recommend it. I have no intention of moving to a four hour work week and his is really designed upon an e-commerce, very specific kind of e-commerce business. Uh, but um, you know, there's some really interesting thoughts and interesting concepts in there that can be adapted to all of our businesses. So has anybody else heard of this and want this for themselves, lifestyle design? I do that. I do this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. How so, Tim? I got into it uh, from minimalism, actually, just where you sort of pick what's important to you and leave out the rest. Yeah. So. Fair enough. Dominique looked like she wanted to contribute something there. Oh, yes, yes. Um, I, uh, um, I absolutely, this is the big thing I'm working on right now. Yeah, it's not easy, though. It really isn't. You got to force yourself to ask, to ask yourself tough questions, and you might not always like the answers. And then you have to force yourself to schedule it and to obey your schedule. So. Okay. Well, I think we're on to the last, oh, no, lifestyle designers. So uh, this is just some, some ideas of lifestyle design. We've worked with some digital nomads. Uh, what we find is we really have to rein them in on their residency status. Because especially if they're running like a Canadian e-commerce company, if they spend more than 183 da days out of the country, it's no longer a Canadian controlled private corporation. And it can create some, some kind of issues there. Uh, Home-based business owners, uh, they can be really good. But again, need to be able to schedule and need to be able to obey the schedule. Because what I find with some home-based business owners is they just want to be home and not really working. And you can't be successful doing that. Um, in the past, we've had difficulty with people who, like this appears to be their dream job, but they can't actually discipline themselves to set aside the time to do the work. And so they fall behind very quickly and then everybody else has to help them catch up. And that's not really being part of the team. I think everybody here now is working from home. Is anybody still working in an office? Okay, so I think, oh, why? Oh, you're muted, sorry. Um, I have staff and yeah, basically I can't um, focus at home. Oh, that's yeah. a good reason. So yeah, we have very minimal staff. So yeah. And then of course my my main thing is taxes. So I'm also in the middle of tax season. And so. that ability to focus is so important. Right? Yeah. Like a home office does you no good if it's the kitchen table and you know. Yeah. You know, you we were mandated um, by our, our government to be at home in December, early January. But uh, yeah, I came back as soon as tax season started. How did it go when you were mandated to work from home? I I found that's when I found that yeah the focus it was it was hard to focus. It's also hard to liaison with the clients. But I need to. I'm really enjoying this particular uh, session. I enjoy all your sessions, but because this is really what I need right now is this booking time to do the big jobs and because of course tax season I'm doing T ones the T twos and the corporate stuff is kind of falling behind so. Yeah. Very timely. Uh, good. <laughs> the yeah, hardest part Leanne, I find is obeying the schedule. Yeah, I was going to say Leanne time blocks and she is working from our other office that we have that we just signed into a 10 year lease for before COVID hit. But it's just a small office. It's no bigger than my garage. But she chooses to go there by herself because it's, again, she, like Jennifer, she can't necessarily. Um, you know, focus as much. Now, I just want to point out here that I think it's really important to people working from home, because I've experienced it myself. It's not just us that we need to keep disciplined. We need the support of the people in our house. Because if my husband's upstairs, and he's going to hear me say this because he's off today. But it took until 
probably our second year of being in the office or maybe the first year of being in this office up here when we were in the basement, he would still come down. He'd be like, well, you've been home all day. Well, yeah, but I've been working a job because they see you there. It is very difficult um, to do that. So you need the full support of the people that will be around you during those potentially during those hours to understand this is a job. You're treating it like a job. So it, it's, it's, it definitely is a lot more shift than your own mindset. So that's a very good point. So I have been very fortunate. My husband has been, nope, this is your job. This is your, like, even if we have appointments for the kids for the doctor appointment, he doesn't assume that I would take it because my job happens to be at home. So he's been very good. Where I am having problems is having the children understand that the closed door behind me means that mommy and daddy are working and and I say mommy and daddy, they're like 15 and 12 or 16 and 12, right? Like these aren't little kids. Um, if anybody has suggestions on how to get them to stop bursting through the doors, that would be a lock. <laughs> I have one. But what we ended up doing here is, um, and we did this when we had webinars is we would just put a little, like a thing on the door, like a sticky note or well, maybe even bigger than the sticky note, a piece of paper, like, you know, recording in progress, do not enter. Um, and cause I can't lock the door from my side. It can be locked from this side. I can be locked into the, into the office. I can't lock them out because of course it's a garage, right? But maybe a lock, a big, big sign saying, you know what, like enter and, you know, you won't live to see next week, <laughs> whatever will work for them, whatever their motivation is. I don't know if that'll work, but. Stacy, oh. I usually, um, so I only have one child, but even so I, I got this from one of the conferences it was sent. And if my door is closed and this is on the outside of the door, Rachel knows do not come in. Oh, um, well, right now, obviously COVID and nothing's normal. So I have one who's hundred percent virtual. Well, two is virtual, but one's a teenager, so I don't see her, which is awesome. But one's 10, and I have him parked right there because I need to keep an eye on him to make sure he's working. But out of COVID, normal times, um, it was just basically you can't beat them. So join them in the way that I know when they are most boisterous and when they want me the most. And that's pretty much straight off the school. So I didn't work for a few hours after school. And then when they were doing, you kind of schedule your day around when you know. So they know that they have me 100% certain time and they need to bugger off and leave me alone, alone a certain time. And then I work when they're in the evening when they're in bed or they're getting ready for bed. So, you know, oh. it's basic, you can't beat them. So you just and have to schedule you yourself. You just gave me. Them. You gave me a great idea, Simon. So here's what you do. You teach them consequences is <laughs> by waiting until they're on the phone with their friends, a private conversation, and then every few minutes burst in, burst into the room. <laughs> hey, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> or they're trying to do their, they're trying to focus and then be like, okay, that's what it's like. <laughs> it might create my a little bit more chaos, but he stole carrots off it again today. Oh. Again. Ugh. Can't read again. Hey, you, know what you, need? you need one you need a little guillotine on the other side of where the carrots are <laughs> wow okay <laughs> i was gonna like say mousetrap but guillotine okay that's some serious <laughs> consequences <laughs> obviously a non-working one because it would be very bad children's aid would be here very quickly if they heard i really would okay. want to cut my child's fingers off <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the consequences are for us because can you imagine the amount of the right. backing up we have to do? Yeah. I You're right. built this casa out of red cups, you know, beer cups once, and I don't know what happened to me, but I knocked it down. It just, I had this evil thought and I just knocked it down. It's been years and I'm still paying back for that one devil moment, never mind the guillotine. All right, I'm going to move on because we're actually past one o'clock. So I'm just going to say real quickly, the key about lifestyle design is you can make the rules, but you have to obey your own rules. Um, there's, you know, couples who I, I know who are retired at, you know, 40 and they might not, they don't longer live in Canada, but they worked their butts off. They took almost no debt. And when they decided it was time, 
they're living overseas in in uh, countries where the cost of living is far lower and they're able to do crazy like so something that most people think is crazy like just work a regular job and then retire that young but uh you know, there's sacrifices with everything so okay last poll question so what's the most important factor in finding your flow a the tools you use b avoiding distraction uh, C, the books you read, D, running your systems and schedule, and E, knowing your priorities. Give them a tougher one. A lot of those could be. I can't vote, but I think, I think five. Because if you don't know your priorities, than the tools or the distractions and all of that other stuff. But that's my thought because I can't vote. So we have 13 out of 15. I am one of those. We have one more person out there. 14 out of 15. Yay, everybody voted. That okay. was well, me. I, I was having trouble deciding. I kept reading them. We needed a <laughs> A and C or D and E or one of all of the, we needed one of those type of answers this time. You always have one of those type of answers. It threw me off. <laughs> yeah, usually. And it's usually the right answer too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Try to okay, break my so pattern a bit. Uh, so I, I would say it's running your systems and your schedule. Everything else is, go so your priorities, they're going into your schedule. The books, those are helping you influence your schedule, your, your systems. The tools are just tools. They're hammers, they're screwdrivers, they're wrenches. Avoiding distractions is just paying attention to your schedule. That's why I selected sure. that, but again, it's, it's subjective. It's not necessarily 100%. And you know what? We look at, at the results here, 47% and 47%. Yep. Even. Pretty yep. tight pretty tight yep. so all right so uh nobody sets the rules but you you can design your own life i love that it came from somebody who was in the matrix too <laughs> awesome but uh, okay. the hardest part is obeying your own rules all right so, so happy I just to connect can... with everybody oh sorry i was just gonna say i know there's been questions um up earlier from somebody to share the books i have the book titles the authors and the link to the blog post that are going to all go into the email Awesome. So awesome. And I'm, of course, I'm happy to talk to people most of the time. So let's connect. All Not right. happy to talk to people the rest of the time. <laughs> well, there's certain times. There's certain times. You know it. Certain you just times don't answer. Certain people. Certain times. <laughs> there's certain people, people you just never want to talk to. Too, so. Yeah. So, okay. So is there any questions we want to address right now? Or Tony, do you have to go to the next thing? No, I, if people have things they want to talk about, I'm good. Hey, Donnie, I actually have nothing this afternoon mm. until five o'clock. You know, I'm, it's, wow. <laughs> Sorry, let me pick my jaw up off the floor. Dominique, I know, right? Time, time to drink. Yeah, really. Day drinking time. <laughs> Dominique, thanks for sharing the, um, the uh, five choices. That, that, that was definitely good. Um, and they're very important. And you got to keep circling back to them and reminding yourself of them. Um, I, I wanted to add two things, um, and that is I, I'm actually going through this process right now. So I'm outlining it in DynaList. I'm putting my links in and in, in, in my notes into ClickUp. Um, I'm uh, mind mapping all my thoughts, and I'm starting to use the old Project Management Institute, the PMI, um, um, uh, you know, defining what my scope is, you know, my high level scope and what my requirements are, like for running my life and my practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then what my deliverables are, and I'm starting to create actually the old style flow charts. Um, so um, I actually learned something on your, your five, your different types of T1s, because I was trying to think, gee, I, um, I've got too many options. So yes, having these subflows. So yes, so the first the first step is what type of T1 client is it? Is it new, returning, deceased? Uh, um, the second step is what year? Oh yeah, oh yes, what year? So 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 um yes, absolutely. And and um and I've gone to Udemy and actually today so um, I, I picked up uh, some um, some refresher courses about how to do how to write the 
the scope of work and stuff. And, and it really, you know, documenting it has really streamlining for me. Because when I started 21, 22 years ago, we used to have paper forms, right? So a client came in, you had your intake sheet, you wrote the notes, then you put it into maybe a memo form. But since we're going everything's going online i i have so much stuff that's still in free form that this really it really helps me hone in on what's important what's critical and i go through the workflow process like even if i know everything i think i know everything about the client i'm forcing myself to go through my checklist i'm a, pretending i'm a jet jet fighter pilot and i'm going through my my checklist that was a difficult habit for me to assume when we first started uh, better mapping and creating workflows is to make sure I followed the procedure and because you know like accountant arrogance we think we know everything right so wrong you don't know everything you need to follow the procedure and, and make sure that you're checking some things because might not always apply all right okay well everybody I hope you find your flow today Awesome. The only other actually tip that I wanted to point out that we started doing um, is on our emails, we have an autoresponder um, that actually says, you know, thanks, we received your email, you know, please, you know, allow 24 to 48 hours because it's in our, our engagement, but people tend to forget that, especially when we can, re you know, a lot of the times we respond sooner or, or if I'm responding on the weekend and I forget to schedule it to go on Monday, such as our friend that I was, you know, emailing with uh, Sunday evening. Um, and so it just says there, please allow 24 to 48 hours for a response. So that's another way that you can kind of help train your clients, give yourself a little bit of a breather. And then you don't have to feel either um, that you have to run and respond to. We still try to respond to everything, you know, same day, but if it's not urgent, if it's not whatever, if, you know, our schedule just doesn't permit, we know that's the expectation that that client's getting. And then that, that autoresponder, I think, is set to go out like once a day. So if they email us 10 times in a day, they only get it the first time. The next awesome. day, they get it again the first time the next day. That's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. All right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Well, again, thanks again, Jonathan. It was, My you know, like really great advice. And, you know, if you want to, you know, we can talk and see how we can do, you know, a, a, a great collaboration on the coaching and maybe even have the guest coaches on. And so maybe even do longer than an hour to be able to get some of them on to be able to talk about things. Cause I'd love, I've got lots of thoughts on that too. And, and stuff. So I'd like to get more involved on that if we could on that one. It would be interesting to hear coaches opinions too. Ex well, exactly. And I think that would be great to have. You've got Juliet, I've got Jeannie on there and yeah. Uh, and I met uh, recently another coach who I think could be very interesting and attractive to a lot of people. And uh, he's a construction coach and mm. he speaks accountant. Like he wow. can help translate between the construction guys, guys running the company, site manager, stuff like that. And why what they're doing is important to the business and how it has to flow through the bookkeeping system to give meaningful information. That's a great cool. skill set for him to have to speak construction and accounting and business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are three um, languages. Yeah. Tanya, we'll yeah. talk offline, but uh, we yeah, will. Let's, let's try and set that up. It might take a little while, you know, might not be. Yeah, to be able to pull everybody together. But I think, again, if we did that and have the guest coaches on yeah. and open it up, I think it would be definitely well worth the wait. So thank you for those ideas, Dominique. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Okay, well, everybody have a wonderful week. And we'll happy talk Easter, later. everybody. Happy Easter. Oh, yes, that's right. It's Easter coming up. Happy Easter. And I hope everybody takes some time to themselves this weekend. Thanks. I've been nibbling on my mini Easter eggs while we've been talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I love that. All right. Bye. Bye okay. Everybody. Take care, everybody. Bye.